Hello and welcome to discussion today on Rajya Sabha TV. I am Tina Jha. Today on the show, we will talk about the second phase of the world's largest vaccination drive against coronavirus. While well, India began inoculating its senior citizens against the disease on Monday, in this phase, people above the age of 60 years and those above 45 years with comorbidities, that is, those who are in the high-risk category, will be administered the vaccine. The jab will be available free of cost at government hospitals and at a capped price of 250 rupees per dose at private hospitals. Prime Minister Narendra Modi became the first beneficiary to get vaccinated in the second phase. He appealed to those eligible to get vaccinated and help India become COVID-free. Vice President M. Venkaya Naidu also took his first dose of COVID-19 vaccine and appealed to all the eligible people to get themselves vaccinated proactively and join in the fight against novel coronavirus. So on discussion today, we will be talking about the procedure, the arrangements, and all the other aspects in the effective implementation of the vaccination drive as it opens for the general public and how it will strengthen India's fight against COVID-19. Joining me on the program are two very special guests. Let me introduce them to you. We are joined on the program by Dr. Samiran Panda. He is member, National Expert Group on Vaccine Administration for COVID-19 and also head epidemiology and communicable diseases division ICMR. We also have with us Professor Salman Singh. He is director at the All India Institute of Medical Sciences, Bhopal. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining me on this edition of discussion today. Dr. Panda, so let me begin the program today with you since we have now entered the second phase of our vaccination drive, the world's largest vaccination drive against COVID-19. The first thing that we and our viewers would like to understand is what is the reason, the criteria behind opening up the second phase first for the elderly, the senior citizens of the country? Well, uh, this consideration of uh, opening up the scope or the opportunities for those who are elderly above 60 for COVID-19 vaccine is based on the course of the disease that India has witnessed. And globally, that also holds true. So initially, in the first phase, we went ahead and vaccinated the healthcare workers and the uh, uh, frontline workers because uh, their occupational positioning is such that they are more prone to exposure and infection. And if we do not protect our healthcare professionals and frontline workers, the whole healthcare system would collapse. So that was the decision made uh, in the first phase. And that's why the healthcare professionals and the frontline workers received it first. Yes. But in the second phase, it's about uh, reducing the impact of the disease in general population. And as we know from the natural history of the disease, here we are talking about COVID-19 being the disease and SARS-CoV-2 virus being responsible infection for causing the disease. It's known that those who are elderly, if they uh, get the infection, the contract the infection, then the chance of complication or serious disease symptoms are more for the elderly. And some of them might even go to ventilator or unfortunately end up uh, dying. Yes. Uh, that's the reason why elderly people need to be looked into. If we really want to reduce the impact of the disease on the general population, and particularly the elderly, and then those who are having comorbid conditions, for example, diabetes or hypertension, they are also known to be uh, landing in a severe form of the disease complications or going to ventilators and facing death at times. So in order to reduce the impact of the disease COVID-19 on the population and particular sector of the population where the complications are more expected or deaths are more uh, you know, expected to happen, the, that actually guided this decision of opening the scopes for vaccination in the second phase to those who are elderly and to those who are uh, uh, with comorbidity, although they are below 60. Yes. Uh, 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 Professor Singh, coming to you on understanding how this is going to strengthen our uh, fight against uh, COVID-19. So the second phase begins at a time 
when we have seen over the past few days, there's been a surge in cases in some of the states, especially in Kerala, in Maharashtra. And this has led to a fear among people that India could, uh, you know, potentially be staring at a second wave of infections. So at this very time, how is this second phase of uh, vaccination drive going to strengthen our fight against the disease? Yeah, you very rightly said that because, you know, this is a very pertinent time. Uh, for two reasons. Number one, uh, obviously the target is about 10 crore vaccinations. And uh, so far we have vaccinated about 1.56 crores. So obviously there's a, there is a huge number of uh, people, those need to be vaccinated. Second, you very rightly said that you know, we are uh, seeing the second spurt of the disease, particularly in some of the states, uh, where uh, uh, the uh, the fear of the disease has come up in the people who, who became earlier complacent and they thought that, you know, epidemic is gone, but now they have also now realizing that, yes, disease is there. And the third thing is also important, I think, uh, that also need to be discussed here because now uh, after vaccinating the healthcare workers and some frontline workers, we know now because capacity of the vaccine is also there. Mm -hmm. So now we are in position that you know, we can vaccinate. We can also roll out the vaccine in the private sector. And this was very nice of this one. I will not name, but one of the uh, private company. They suggested and this government of India agreed with the suggestion. So now this is also being rolled out because this was also a uh, you know, long demand that, you know, if uh, uh, the vaccine is there, why not to the private people, you know, private hospitals and private setup? So in this, this is also the, the, the important region now because we have the vaccine, we have the capacity in the private sector and always our Honorable Prime Minister says that public-private, you know, partnership has to be there. And obviously, if the hospitals can do vaccination, why not? But also, uh, you know, there are challenges uh, that the the in the uh, government sector, the vaccine is free, and in the hosp uh, private hospital, private setup, the vaccine is on the charge basis. Uh, very interesting. Yesterday, I was talking, you know, in dinner time with uh, one, you know, owner of the hospital, and uh, we were just discussing, and they said he said that you know, uh, the vaccine itself costs them private hospital, you know, hundred fifty rupees. Mm -hmm. And obviously, the paraphernalia required, the space required. So uh, I, I look forward that how many people they come forward. But, uh, you know, uh, from yesterday's discussion, I could guess that, you know, probably in the, the rates uh, defined for them, uh, probably uh, this need to be reconsidered. So that was one reason. So this may be a challenge, but definitely uh, the requirement, as Dr. Panda said, that you know the, we need because maximum deaths uh, globally uh, we encountered these were the in the in the people those who are you know uh, more than 60 and those who are having you know comorbidity including the. Yes, rightly said. And look, looking of, at our immense you know, population uh, as well, yeah, in order to you know enhance the vaccination drive, the public-private partnership is something that we must take forward. There will be going forth uh, several challenges that we will discuss in the course of the program. But uh, coming back to you, uh, uh, Dr. Panda, one very encouraging sight uh, on the first day of the second uh, phase of vaccination drive was that the Prime Minister himself, at the you know early in the morning, he was there at the All India Institute of Medical Sciences, Delhi, getting the first dose of vaccine. Going forth, how encouraging will it be? How do you see it paving the way for all other eligible people to come forth and get the vaccination drive? And especially when it comes to addressing something like vaccine hesitancy in our country. I see uh, three things in this particular move by Honorable Prime Minister Mr. Modi. First, he waited for his turn. So the initial decision was to give the vaccines to the uh, healthcare professionals and the frontline workers. And he waited. He, so basically the message that he conveyed, being the, uh, being the prime minister of our country, he did not say uh, that, well, I should get the benefit first. So he waited for his turn. So he didn't break the line, yeah. as, as I say. So he sort of uh, 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 went by the principle that as a country, uh, we all took and the government took that the priority is with the frontline workers and the healthcare workers. The second thing that I see is that 
he then waited and realized that now it is the time for those who are above 60. And of course, he is above 60. So he said that, OK, so now this is the time for me and people like me. So that's the second. He respected the group dynamics and the group prioritization. The third thing, he also realized that the vaccine hesitancy, which we observed amongst healthcare professionals and the frontline workers, that would also be expected in, in, the, in the group who has now been invited for vaccination. Of course, the nature or the reason for hesitancy would be different. So he very rightly preempted, uh, preempted this uh, uh, situation that there could be hesitancy. So what more could be a signature to saying that, look here, I'm taking Covaxin because he was at Ames, All India Institute of Medical you know, Sciences, New Delhi. And uh, that's the site where Covaxin is being given. And uh, there were a whole lot of questions in terms of how was it given the approval for oh, him yeah. and how quickly, how, so very quickly, the vaccine could come into being. And there were a whole lot of debates and discussions leading to or contributing to vaccine hesitancy. And this was a master stroke, I would say. He said uh, his act itself uh, in terms of going ahead and taking the vaccine underlines that, look here, I trust this vaccine and I believe that no safety corner has been cut. So until and unless a vaccine is proven to be safe in clinical trial phase one, and if a vaccine is not uh, shown to be immunogenic in phase two, it does not move to uh, larger human clinical trials, which is called phase three. And there uh, he clearly said that although uh, some of the results are yet to come out for both the vaccines, I am fine with the safety data, and I am the person who is ready uh, to take it, and that actually would address the vaccine hesitancy in a big way. That's, that's what I would take from this act of him. Absolutely. A very, very significant and important message that uh, the Prime Minister has given. Professor Singh, or, or what do you think? Because initially, when we saw the first phase of the vaccination drive begin, there were apprehensions among healthcare workers against getting the indigenous uh, vaccine, the co-vaccin. Now, with the Prime Minister leading by example, leading by action, and getting himself administered with our very own indigenous vaccine, uh, what kind of positive impact do you see it making among the general public? Yeah, carrying forward the what Dr. Panda said, you know, this is, you know, if uh, any country's head of the country uh, takes the vaccine, I think this is the biggest, you know, episode and biggest, you know, satisfaction for the those who are having, if at all, any apprehension about the safety. Because if the prime minister can take, you know, why not me, why not uh, my family, my children or anybody else. And then, uh, as very rightly said earlier, also political for uh, regions, Many people, they used to say that, you know, why Prime Minister is not taking if it is so safe. And uh, very rightly, uh, Dr. Panda has, uh, you know, given that uh, answer that why he didn't do this at that time. Because at that time, uh, the group which was, you know, targeted was only healthcare workers and frontline workers. Yeah. And as soon as the first very March and very first evening, very first person, uh, he opted for when his turn came. So definitely this will give very uh, good uh, you know, indication and hesitancy, if at all, in the people about the uh, co-vaccine. That will, I am sure, that will go away. And uh, the safety issue, as uh, you know, we have been saying, uh, uh, this should, uh, I, I think uh, this will be the, the taking vaccine by Honorable Prime Minister and the Vice President and others, Dr. Guleria, Dr. B.K. Paul, and many others people they have already taken so that definitely the hesitancy uh, will go away uh, after this episode of him. Okay, absolutely. Uh, coming back to the role of the private sector, uh, Dr. Panda, which, uh, you know, Professor Singh also raised, there is no doubt that the private sector has a very, very important role to play when it comes to producing these vaccines. But now that they are being included in the distribution as well, there are concerns, apart from pricing that uh, Professor Singh raised, there are concerns among sections that including the private sector now in the distribution of the vaccine will lead to wrongful exclusions of those who are eligible and jumping of queues by people who have means and in this case, people, those who, who, who can, you know, spend a lot of money. What is the government doing to address these apprehensions among people? Okay. 
uh, here I would uh, look into the need of the R. What is the need of the R? Uh, the R C in six to ten states a little bit of upsurge wow. in terms of infections. So what do we need to do? We need to rapidly mount barricades, if you like it, or walls of resistance against the virus. Because the virus is trying to find its way. So the person who is infected from him or her, it would go to a group of people who are susceptible or vulnerable. So if we want to break this chain of transmission, we have to create uh, walls of resistance or the barriers of resistance around uh, the persons person. who are infected and who are able to transmit the infection. So how do we do that? The one possibility is that mask, use of mask uh, by people and the social distancing and the hand hygiene, as well as avoidance of mass gathering. But if you take into the uh, cognizance the reality, the reality is that we are seeing prevention fatigue. After so many months, about a year, uh, we have been following these practices of uh, mask mandate and uh, social distancing or physical distancing actually during social interactions and hygiene. And then the schools are planning to open up, the malls are planning to open up, the business is trying to gain its old pace. Yeah. So if that's the need of the hour, you would naturally be able to not maintain uh, all the COVID appropriate behaviors that yes. one would expect or would uh, desire or would like to have. So then we have another prevention tool, which is vaccine. So the whole emphasis is on vaccine and how quickly we can uh, protect those who are susceptible through vaccination. <laughs> so only depending on the government uh, hospital or healthcare center based outlets would slow down the pace of the vaccination. So if we really need to you know, uh, scale up the mass of people, the critical mass that we need to achieve or attain, in terms of those who are vaccinated, then the infection would not be able to spread. The, the chain of transmission of the virus will be broken. So in order to break the chain of transmission of the virus, we need to do it really rapidly. And there, I think the move is quite smart that the government health care and, and the private hospitals join hands. But as Professor Sarman Singh mentioned, I, 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 I that there is a consideration not only about the money, but also ensuring that private uh, hospitals or the care centers uh, play the game uh, fairly. Yes. So there should not be any exploitation of people in the name of vaccination. So it's, so, it's, it's not incumbent on the government to ensure that people are not exploited in the process. I agree. But this move yes. of bringing both public and private uh, sector together uh, is a smart move because what we need, you know, is smart vaccination rather than mass vaccination. Mass vaccination cannot happen overnight, but smart vaccination would allow us to vaccinate very quickly the prioritized groups. Okay, but in the second phase now, since we also have the walk-in walk option for people, even if you don't pre-register, you can walk into a center and get yourself vaccinated. How will the government ensure that the private players are playing a fair game? They're not actually indulging in black marketing, looking at the global supply, you know, demand chain, because obviously worldwide we are seeing uh, every, every country wants vaccine and to ensure that private players don't actually hoard and don't indulge in black mar marketing, what are the stringent measures that, that we must take? Yeah, I, I think as, uh, you know, I will take forward what I say earlier and Dr. Uh, Samiran uh, Panda also said. And, uh, uh, you know, it is it is a fear, but I, I think that uh, uh, the, the, the uh, doses of the vaccine, we have sufficient and we have fortunately two vaccines as of now. And by maybe next 15 days or three weeks, we are expecting another vaccine. So two, three vaccines. So black may, uh, black marketing, I think, uh, will not be a concern, but definitely okay. breaking the queue, that may be a concern. 
-hmm. For that, I think government has already done, uh, you know, even though you very rightly said that, you know, uh, on the spot registration is also available. But then also this registration has to be made and this will be linked to the main portal. So that will be there. But um, uh, to be very honest, uh, uh, this is one apprehension and it is very difficult to say here with confidence that, you know, it will not happen. But I think, uh, you know, bottom line is, as Dr. Panda said, in any case, whosoever, howsoever, he is taking vaccine, that is the bottom line, I think. Absolutely, so, uh, because that is so far, uh, so far we've been done, we, we've been doing extremely good in terms of first containing the virus, now even with implementing the vaccine drive. But if all has to go well in future as well, the government has to ensure that, you know, private players play the game fairly. Okay, uh, Dr. Panda, coming back to you on uh, the challenges that we faced during the first phase of the vaccination drive and going forth into the second phase, what are the lessons learned that we want, uh, you know, to ensure that it doesn't repeat, it doesn't recur uh, for effective implementation? Two or three critical um, uh, lessons mm -hmm. as we learned from the first phase. One was um, uh, how the hesitancy could be addressed. So the role models, they played a great, uh, you know, uh, they, they served a great deal and played a great role by saying like a healthcare professional or a frontline worker by taking a vaccine actually sent a message to uh, his or her colleagues that look here, uh, I have taken the vaccine, I'm doing fine and I have joined back my duties and there is no issues, no problems. So that's a very strong message because we see that our peers, because as we call it, peer influence is much uh, greater influence than any other influence in life. So. Here, I would say that uh, Narendra Modi ji, uh, the Honorable Prime Minister, by taking a vaccine, uh, has been playing exactly the same role. So he can be considered by those who are above 60 uh, as one of the peers, you know, uh, a man of my age or similar age. That's what exactly the elderly would think, number one. Number two, you also realized that media played a great role like Rajya Sabha TV or print media or even Red FM um, or other you know, channels of communication. It could be TV channels. Uh, so if they spread positive messages in terms of assurance and uh, the necessity of vaccination and the necessity of quickly attaining the hard immunity through vaccination, here we are not talking about hard immunity through natural infection, because natural infection is something which we cannot maneuver. So that infection will infect elderly and they will land up in complications, which we discussed a little uh, while ago. In this so in, if media plays this important role, that vaccination is going to actually help out in terms of uh, producing hard immunity, that would not only be helpful for the individual, but also uh, for the community as a whole, because the chain of transmission of the virus, the virus. Is and everybody has a role to play in there. So that's the second thing. And the third, what I would say is community engagement. So if community uh, comes forward, not only to encourage people to get vaccination, and uh, also dispelling the myths and misconceptions, but going ahead and having a conversational relationship where with the private hospitals, they can say that it's a pandemic setting and not that all the private hospitals, you know, are looking out for making money. So this is not an opportunity for making money. Pandemic should be seen as a public health need. And so the community engagement in this whole initiative is also going to be very, very important. Absolutely. Professor Singh, for the benefit of our viewers, if are there any guidelines for the general public to follow as in, you know, those who have some kind of allergy or something, some kind of guidelines that people must follow before going ahead for the vaccination? Yes, very pertinent and very important. And, you know, the government of India, as well as all the uh, vaccine manufacturers, as well as WHO website, or those who are not able to read the English in Hindi, also in all local languages, all the uh, protocols and the lessons and what are the various conditions who should not take the vaccine they are well you know communicated and they are available in the mass media and public domain so that should be there definitely the particular the most important as 
you very rightly said the allergies to proteins or some other you know drugs they, these people they should not take but otherwise there is no contraindication like uh, those who are hypertensive those who are um, diabetic they can very well they take no issue in that and definitely as again and again we say that even though you are taking vaccine uh, you should not uh, lie down your guards and you know the, the still uh, till your second vaccination is done and uh, the entire country is vaccinated up to 50% or so uh, it will be always advisable and i always reemphasize your channel also reemphasizes in the end that mask has to be worn by all the physical distancing has to be maintained and hand hygiene has to be maintained Definitely. so that is very very important even though you are vaccinated these precautions must be taken till the the corona cases they are there anywhere in the country because no region or no country is you know separate so boundaries are you know uh, they are everywhere we are living in the very small world so we can any time it can come back so this is very very important we should take vaccine but also till the last case is taken care of the covid we should you know uh, uh, you know use our appropriate behavioral practices Absolutely. So that is very, 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 important. very, very significant message there coming in from our uh, distinguished panelists that we must not lower our guard at any cost. We all must uh, continue to maintain COVID appropriate behavior despite the COVID vaccination drive going on. With that, I'll have to wrap it up uh, uh, on the program today. Thank you to both my guests for joining us on the program and sharing your in insights with us, your valuable inputs on the topic today on the second phase of crucial vaccination drive that India began on Monday. So that's it from us on this edition of Discussion Today. Just in case you missed the television broadcast, let me remind you, you can also watch it on YouTube and you can send in your feedback and suggestions to us as well. Thank you for your time.